News and information you can trust. This is American Freedom Radio. Freedom, freedom, American Freedom Radio. Radio. American Freedom Radio. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio. And it is Wednesday night. Uh, I think it's August 1st, uh, 2012, and uh, it's been a crazy day. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are being attacked uh, on our site, and uh, I guess our forum has been steadily under attack for two days. So um, Tommy's been working on it, but hasn't been able to get it back up. So it's just kind of really weird. And uh, just, you know, I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> I, I really don't. Uh, but at any rate, uh, hello, everyone. And uh, just if you're listening and you, you are wondering what's going on with our forum, Tommy is working on it. It's uh, it's It's been heavily under attack. He, he's actually going to have to reconstitute our forum or some crazy thing and archive it and so on and so forth. So um, it, it's just really hard because he's the only person... <laughs> <laughs> who works on it, you know, I don't have anyone else. So he, he just has to do almost everything when it comes to online stuff other than, you know, I mean, I, I post stuff, but I, I can't configure, you know, things behind the scenes, back end stuff. Uh, now, my guest tonight is, is is Nighthawk from Revolution Radio. And he's he's actually uh, a very interesting individual. And I'm, I'm really happy to have him on the show here. Uh, as many people will know, I do a Wednesday show on American Freedom Radio and a Friday show on Revolution Radio. Same time from 7 p.m. Pacific time till 9 p.m. And uh, and it, it's a lot of fun, actually, being on both different stations, a great crowd of people, regardless of where you are. And uh, I assume most of the people kind of carry over anyway. But Nighthawk, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, awesome. Um, and so he's a very experienced radio guy, uh, and I'm going to let him give his introduction, and then we're going to talk about the uh, Aurora shooting uh, and some information that he's been coming up with. People who have been following my blog will have seen me post some information uh, from Nighthawk about a day ago, and apparently there's more information coming forward as we speak, and and. He, he's been staying on this this subject for quite some time and, and getting all sorts of interesting information. Um, and then we're also going to take a sort of a jog to the right or whatever you want to call it. And he has information about sort of machines or whatever, things that are being moved. Uh, I don't know, land, uh, empty land, thing, weird, weird stuff that's going on in his general area of the woods, which is, if I recall... Um, it's not quite East Coast. Is it, do you consider it Midwest? Where, where is it that you are? Yeah, I'm, well, if we ever have a big tidal wave, I'm in the islands of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, at any rate, so give yourself an introduction for those who, who don't know who you are. Uh, you are behind the scenes when I do my show, so maybe they, they haven't heard you come on or whatever kind of thing. Um and and then we'll go into the subject matter. Right. Um, well, I'm a basically a, a grew up a farmer. Uh, spent many years as a musician. Uh, it. I'm a retired professional musician. Um, I uh, about ten years ago decided to buy this farm up here when I started chasing all the same rabbits we're always chasing and. <clears throat> Um, I've ran music radio stations, both terrestrial and whatever, for years and years, and um, been a DJ, and then I decided to go into talk radio, and this all kind of, Revolution Radio kind of started as an experiment a couple of years ago, and uh, and it's just kind of blossomed off all into this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get on Danny's station and, and blow up my station, so to speak, so... That would be unprofessional, but uh, that's just kind of what I do. I'm 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 a truther chasing the same rabbits as everybody else. And as we said earlier, it just seems like the more I get in the rabbit hole, the more they keep setting up furniture for me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I love that saying. I just think that's just great. Um, so what he says is is uh, that 
they're basically setting up furniture as you go down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, I can't take full credit for that, but <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend that, that kind of said that off the cuff one time, sort of like that, and I'm like, oh, I, that, that's awesome. You know, he's like, you know, once you get down to rabbit hole, hawk, rabbit hole hawk, they start setting up furniture for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just a great saying, and I, I think I think it's very cool. I think people should start, you know, picking it up and whatever. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, that's a pretty sketchy uh, beginning, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, so let's go into in into what what you've been investigating here and. And everyone knows about the Aurora, Colorado shooting, but maybe we should lay the groundwork for what is right. in the what what is in the news, and then then how how the, your information is basically contradicting that. Okay. Yeah. Well, first thing I want to start out with here is uh, I released a video yesterday that I'm going to be retracting at midnight, um, and it's not because I made a major mistake in any of the facts. I just mistimelined it. So uh, the way it was given to me about this abduction possibility of three men dragging another man into a car, actually the way it was given to me um, made it sound like it was before the shooting. And actually it was right after the shooting. And we can go into that later because now I got it, I got it set into the, the uh, police dispatch feeds correctly. Uh, where it's supposed to be, it's it's actually not near James Holmes' address. It's just a few blocks from the theater, so it, it changes things a little bit. And and I'm really getting the impression myself that this was a large team operation, and uh, I I have all the 911 or not 911 uh, the dispatch tapes lined up. Uh, we can run them as we go. It's up to you uh, when we get to that point. But uh, I think the most important thing, if you don't mind me running it now. Okay, well, I have an eyewitness report here that uh, you, you'll hear. Uh, of course, you're going to hear what, what he's telling you. But um, this eyewitness report, which was on the news within hours of the broadcast, that disappeared off of the actual news site that put this out which I found interesting in itself. And I'll go ahead and play this now, and I hope you can hear it. Uh, if you can't hear it, uh, send me a, a message in the, uh, in, the, in the chat down here in Skype. So We don't know why, and everybody wants to know why, including those who are over at Gateway High School, and that's where Matt Fleener is right now. Yeah, hi, Kyle. As we uh, focus up our camera here, we just uh, were joined by two people who were actually inside Theater 9 where the main shooting took place. I'm joined by Fasil Iayu and Evan Morrison. Uh, and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Can you just tell me what you saw and what you heard? Um, we were just watching the movie. It was about 15 minutes into it. And as we were doing that, some uh, someone completely dressed in black started walking from the bottom emergency exit on the, on the right. And uh, we saw something getting thrown from the back of the theater. And then from his side, um, something looked like a canister, and it, it went off. The popping noises and tear gas, and then um, he started shooting. So you said you saw something from come from the back of the theater as well, and then the front yeah. as well? Yeah, the, they... They both uh, were thrown. They popped one after the other, and after they did, he started shooting. Okay. Uh, tell, tell me what else you saw. Uh, same thing. I mean, I saw the first thing come from the middle. Uh, it appeared to be an unidentified object, but you could see gas coming out of it, so we can tell. Then people got up, and they started screaming, and so we thought somebody was just hurt from the thing landing on them. And then immediately we saw a man come from the right bottom exit, and then he just pointed the gun in our direction or towards the mid or, uh, middle upper level of the theater and started shooting and we ducked and it's all right so the rest of that that is just you know the basic news reporter i'm a i'm a news junkie of course and here in the studio i have five screens set up running every news source out there <laughs> and, okay, that's uh, great uh that's cool um let me say that so so right from the get-go here we've already got two shooters at least or two two three. individuals three three okay we got yeah, we got three. According to the the story between this and and of course the one we've all we we've all heard a couple of other guys and there's no sense in regurgitating those. But you know we got the guy that goes to the door, he props the door open, then he goes outside, uh, comes back in, 
Then another guy comes in, throws a gas canister and starts shooting. And then another gas canister comes from the back of the theater. So right. we, we got three now already. Okay, great. And so the next step is, uh, I, are you going to go to the part where the guy, uh, the car, the stuff on the car? Okay, I'm going to run uh, the dispatch tapes straight up. Now, the only editing I've actually done to these is I took out all the little dead spaces. You know, when you listen to a scanner, there's, of course, you know, guy says some dead space. So I took all that and I compressed it all in. So we got about three hours of action that I've got put together. I'm going to skip a decent chunk of it um, just because it's radio chatter so we can get to the important parts. So here, here goes segment one. 25, start me Denver cars this way too. I need more help. You will start Denver cars. 321, one of the shooters might be wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. Copy outstanding shooter possibly wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. I've got a child victim. I need rescue at the back door of Theater 9 now. Back door of Theater 9, we'll start him. Red Cruiser 49, I need a car at Sable. Copy, need a unit to respond to Sable as well. Red Cruiser, we're on a correction. I need a car at Exposition and Abilene. Exposition and Abilene. <laughs> Lincoln 25, unpatch channel 2 and channel 3. Channel 2 will be inside, channel 3 will be outside. All right, so there we got our, <clears throat> excuse me, there we got our first description of the shooter in the in the blue, uh, um, the blue, or excuse me, the plaid shirt, okay? They got that first description of the first shooter. Okay, now we're going to jump way ahead, almost uh, an hour, maybe, not, maybe not an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And then we got another section here. That, that was my concern from the very beginning as I have taken, you know, it started out with somebody sent me uh, approximately 20 hours of tapes. And now I've got like 200 hours of tapes, uh, different versions of this, different channels, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, and it's just, it's kind of got overwhelming. My, you know, my wife says, you're going to drive yourself crazy with this. But anyway, okay, we're going to pick this up now. In black clothing headed towards the Mount Alameda. Hey, 230, just a little bit more. Roar officer is going to give you a little bit more of an update right here. Okay, uh, suspect is going to be a male, unknown. One of the construction Let workers said somebody just came poking out of the parking lot. Male, red backpack is all they saw was headed towards Alameda. Oh, Baker, you are on Alameda right now. In Baker, you one, we have an RP by the male dressed in black with a black backpack going to the northeast. Copy all units on blue southeast. Denver CAC 21 stating a male with a red backpack and another one possibly in black clothing headed towards the Mount Alameda. Hey, 230, just a little bit more. Roar officer is going to give you a little bit more of an update right here. Okay, uh, suspect is going to be a male, unknown race, black camo out type outfit. Believed to be wearing a vest, gas mask, and multiple long guns. Copy all units responding to the theater. Suspect is a uh, male, unknown race, black camo outfit, possible vest, gas mask, and multiple long guns. One really critical. Copy. All right, so now we got two more. We got the re the guy with the red backpack. We got the guy with the black backpack. Uh, they're running towards Sable and Alameda, and that's going to make this next bit so important. Uh, this is from a different channel. Remember earlier, and I played this on purpose earlier, they said I want to open up uh, channel two, channel three, and then we got interagency uh, uh, feed from... Uh, um, the Colorado or Denver interagency feed where, where they all kind of coordinate what they're going to do. So you're going to hear a report on a different channel, and then I left what comes after that on purpose so you can understand why I played earlier and, and get the timeline. So here we go. Any units that can clear and start for an unknown problem, 1690 South Moline Street, 1690 South Moline Street. We have a report of an unknown problem with these three people dragging a person into an unknown description vehicle and last seen northbound on the street. Any outside agencies that can assist? Copy, thank you. I have no further, if you could at least check the area for us, I have no further information. 1690 South Moline Street, 100 blocks from Moline is 11500. Radio to Denver Attack 37, go ahead with your update. Updated is version suspect in all black, black tactical vest, black tactical helmet, all assault off, gas mask, full tactical gear, at least one handgun, possible shotgun, possible one other long gun. All right, so the piece of my theory here at this point is at 16, yeah, initially I made a mistake. I, I, I went with 1690 Moline Street, which 
oddly enough, is just two blocks from James Holmes' house. But it's actually the address which, you know, we had a, a listener point out that it said 1690 South Mullen Street, which was Elsa. So I went and looked that up. And earlier you heard about the red backpack, black backpack guy heading towards uh, uh, the addresses, they said. I went and looked up 1690 South Mullen Street, and it was very close to that area. We got three guys dragging a third guy. All right, go ahead. Uh, Yeah, no problem. We're going to go to a commercial, and we'll be right back with uh, Nighthawk talking about the Aurora shooting and giving us some great information. Thank you. Okay, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Nighthawk about the Aurora shooting, and we were just about to go into his theory, but we also need to run down this uh, the three men in the car that pulled the, the fourth guy into the car, uh, so however you want to handle that, Nighthawk, if you want to give your theory and then explain that incident and in terms of timing and distance from the theater, when it occurred and how much time, in other words, a plausible explanation for what went on there. Or, you know, or you do that first or second, it's up to you. All right. Well, I mean, basically, you know, my th- here is my theory. I'm gonna, I'll, give my, I'll give my theory straight up. Uh, which may be adjusted later as I as I learn more because I mean it's just this overwhelming amount of stuff I uh, you know when I put out the call for I want to investigate this because I don't think this is right I didn't expect what I got <laughs> and I guess we should you know you get what you wish for but uh, the entire thing that I see here is a botched operation by a team and I also the things that I'm I, I feel or sense from. All the tapes I've heard of, of the different shooters and the eyewitness reports and the different shooter reports is that the person they're dragging in the car may be an, a, an injured person in the team. I think that they James Holmes was never meant to make it to court. I think he was he was drugged up. I think they overdid it. Uh, I don't know if they devil's breathed him or you know I as I told you earlier in a discussion we had. I've known people that have over my lifetime that have have gotten uh, taken one too many uh, hits of acid, and and they get stuck in a lifelong uh, bad trip loop. Um, but you know, I think the the intention was a Sir Hans Sir Hans style kind of uh, bla- except for n- to get killed. I, I yeah, think Jack- going out in going out in a blaze of fire. Plus, right. uh, you know. Right. There's no doubt whatsoever, uh, I, I think, uh, that you're, you're right about that. Right. Um, I want to get back before we kind of go further to this, this, uh, the three guys dragging the one guy into the car and find out how long after the shooting did that occur. It, uh, one hour and 20 minutes. I've had three other people look at this. I actually have a uh, somebody that was trolling my YouTube video that gave me the better information, and then I went back and got some more raw feeds and found this. This was an hour and 20 minutes after the shooting, and also we've got earlier, you know, earlier in those tapes, we've got all these runners that are heading in that direction. Okay, when you say runners, are, uh, what do you mean by runners? Were they just uh, bystand- uh, people- bystanders, or do you know, do you, no, uh, no. was there something unique about the runners? Was there something yeah, military? The, yeah, these were the other shooters that were seen running from the scene. Uh, okay, one and instruction, yeah. How were they described? I mean, do you have, do you, or do you have any tape that we get to hear yeah, that one, people describe? One, yeah, I can't. Yeah, let me go back. No, I that guess would be very interesting, uh, you know, because that does substantiate that, uh, you know, in other words, they were trying to to rescue one team member and uh, and basically were kind of blowing it. Um, it they they might have been in hiding or running during that hour. You said it took twenty five minutes running if you're a Navy SEAL to get to that space, right? Right, yeah, especially if you're bringing an injured person with you. Okay, so we'll go back. Now, like I said, these tapes I'm running, they're extremely compressed. I'm compressing like an hour into like five minutes because I'm taking out all the dead space. So uh, we'll run this again. Yes, on blue southeast, Denver CAC 21 stating, and mailed the red backpack. 
and another one possibly in black clothing headed towards the Mount Alameda. Hey, 2.30, just a little bit more. Aurora officer is going to give you a little bit more of an update right here. Okay, uh, suspect is going to be a male, unknown race, black camo out type outfit, believed to be wearing a vest, gas mask, and multiple long guns. Copy. All units responding to the theater. Suspect is a uh, male, unknown race, black camo outfit, possible vest, gas mask, and multiple long guns. One all right, we got enough people on foot. Let's get some police cars back here on the east side so we can get victims transported. Got enough people on foot. Get your cars back over here. Okay, so, you know, they gave the direction they were running towards Alameda, which is okay, yeah, directly in line. Directly in line with uh, that Moline Street? Right, South Moline. If you go to Google and look up 1690 South Moline Street and then go find the Century Theaters, uh, you'll find that that's a direct line uh coming off of them theaters if, if they had, you know, an escape plan. This is what's interesting to me. I don't know how it is for the listeners, but um, the first time you played that, I didn't realize that that was actually people that were, you know, dressed the way they, they described, et cetera, that were running away from the theater, that it was after the shooting that that, that, that was going on. So, in other words, they could have been running to it and it could have been before the shooting. Or, or during the shooting or whatever. Um, anyway, so so that's that's very interesting. They had a yeah. tremendous amount of gear on. That does lend itself to the idea that this is a team, as you said, like a professional team of some kind, right? Right. Yeah. That's that's what I'm. You know, that's what I'm seeing is that they have a they have a team because we've gotten you know we've got a gas canister coming in from the back of the theater. We've got a gas canister coming in from the front of the theater. We've got somebody that went and opened the door. We have uh, one guy with a plaid shirt uh, an hour earlier that was seen fleeing the scene. We've got the guy with the red backpack. We've got the guy with the black backpack. Then we got the who they say is James Holmes in the riot gear. So we, we've got a huge pile. I've got I didn't. I didn't have time to get it queued up because I got so many hours to tape. But there's also another incident where where a deputy has somebody at gunpoint at the jewelers in the mall where, after they found that the door to Macy's was open. Okay. Uh, uh, what time was was that? I mean, in other words, was did this? That, that was a, that was a couple of hours after what we're even listening to now. Did you get tapes from before that? The shooting? Yeah, I have uh, several hours of tapes, uh, really boring stuff that if I tried to do it now, we'd just spend a lot of time listening to clicks and thumps. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want that. I just wondered if you'd listen to some tapes before the shooting and if there was any suspicious activity in the general area. Well, I listened to tapes before the shooting and I, I there were several mentions that some might call suspicious. Where they were, uh, were good. there was a lot of calls around the addresses in the mall. There was a lot of calls uh, and discussions about staging areas and staging points. I don't, you know, and it's, I don't know what they mean. I, I mean, I'm just a guy listening to tapes trying to sort out what I'm hearing. So I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that says that's what it is. Sure. Uh, and, and we do provide all the tapes for every tape that I've found so far is provided at freedomslips.com forward slash Aurora. You can go get them yourself. And yeah, take- and that, that's actually a, a great service. So at the moment, uh, do you have another guest that you want to bring on? And how did, how did do you want him to, is he going to call in? Or well, do you- I was, I, I'm trying to get him in here, but he's not responding right now. So. Oh, all right. So we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, but meanwhile, we do have the caller lines open. I just want the people uh, who are listening uh, out there to, to know that we have the caller line out there. I, I want to tweet the show. I haven't had a chance to do so just yet, but um, that will help you know give a heads up out there. Uh, but, but the bottom line is if you want to call in and you have some information, please do so. This would be a great opportunity to, to do that. We, we are going to, in theory, have another sort of person call in at some point, right? Uh, Nighthawk? I, I hope so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. You know, we're doing what the best we can here, uh, obviously. Anyway, I just want people to also know that our, our website has been, been hit uh, numerous times uh, today. And, well, it's been, been hit lately a great deal, but, but it seemed like they were really going crazy today, late this afternoon during the show here. Um, my, my webmaster has just really been inundated. When we get hit this way and we have a certain show coming up or about to do a show, it's always an indicator that that show is going to be really hot and that the, you know, 
powers that be out there who want to mess with us uh, don't want us to do the show. They're, they're trying to interfere in every way they can. Yeah, um, we had Ghost on last night, and he was discussing uh, some uh, special forces and SEAL team tactics. And absolutely every time he said the word SEAL team, we lost him. His computer would just dump us. Um, it, it was it was crazy. But, uh, you know, and, the, and we get further on into the timeline of this, and there's, there's calls for a bomb. And to clear everybody from the scene, there's a bomb, or there's a secondary device, is what they said, exactly. And okay, clear- and can you describe again, when you say when you get further into the scene, what do you mean by that? In other words, you got a guy, Kim's in the theater, and, and you've got the, the smoke, uh, the gas, whatever you call those things, canisters, and then you have the shooting. When did this bomb thing go out? Uh, this is about three hours in, maybe a little less. Um, an officer calls and says that there's a secondary device and he wants the entire front of the theater cleared. Uh, what he said, and you can go listen to this on the tapes, of course, is that it, it could have been a thermos or whatever, but the point is that they cleared the scene of, of all witnesses once. And then it happened again at the side of the theater where they cleared all the witnesses again. Um, how long do we got... <laughs> I hate uh, so how long have we got till commercial because I'll run we have, we have time we have time so okay. uh, I believe we have time <laughs> famous last okay. words but go ahead <laughs> uh, we I believe we have time okay let me let me go down into some back end of this so uh, let's pick it up here we do have more ambulance from out of the city coming in too we can be on the east side of the theater so we can stop taking patrol cars Copy, I'll let him know. Officers on foot around front, watch out. We're leaving quickly with victims. Thanks, Trace. We're going to have to get her down. Denver 320 and 324. Denver 222. Denver 231 and 212. Denver 234, 232 and 224. Denver 232, 10, 310, 054, 317, 328, 324, 322, 231, 312, 234, 232, and 224. 834. Denver Yankee 33 and Denver Yankee 35 are coming Denver 352, where is their, their command post? Denver to Aurora, confirm the location of your command post. To all you- yes, sir. Okay. 35 East Alameda Avenue, southeast of the Aurora Mall. Lieutenant, Fire Chief has been notified. Okay, thank you. And for now, the command is in front of the theater. I'll be command in front of the theater now. That's our 10, okay? And it's going to back clear this to James Holmes. Broomfield 341, 91 and 51 are out as well. Copy Broomfield. Copy two more critical to University. Theo, I got Inglewood on scene. Where do you want them? All right, we got enough people on foot. Let's get some police cars back here on the east side so we can get victims transported. Got enough people on foot. Get your cars back over here. Lincoln 25, I'll assume command of this. Lincoln 25, if we've got Inglewood cars here, I need them to start segregating people in the front of the store. Copy, Inglewood needs to start segregating people in front of the store. I want no cars leaving this lot. I want this lot blocked down. No cars leaving. 514 to radio. I'm at Expo and Stable. I have Denver, Inglewood, Wilton, and Arapahoe here. As of right now, I'm going to send them to the east side of the, of the theaters to help transport victims unless told otherwise. Lincoln 25 negative. I want all of the Inglewood, Denver, and people to stage in the Dillard's lot and start moving towards the front of Century 16. I need them to start segregating people. Copy. Have them stage in the Dillard's lot to congregate and start moving towards the theaters. The Leather Rival University. Copy. <laughs> Denver TAC 37, I could not hear you over your sirens. University. You're doing route with two University critical. Sinatra, okay. Team 3. Yeah, I got parents showing up saying they have kids involved that are being transported. Do we have a list of knowing where to direct them to what hospital? Sir, unfortunately, no. We're using any available hospital at this point. Okay. Good. Free up some officers inside. Is there a person outside they can rally with to start figuring out how to interview people? Lincoln 25, do you want all available PD to meet you at the Dillard slot? I want all available PD cars to stage in the Dillard slot. I can't have a whole bunch of people parking around. Everybody stage in the Dillard slot, and I want all those ever agencies just to come to the front of the store so we can start segregating people. Copy. Any available units that are not doing transports, you can stage in the Dillard slot. Cruiser 25, I'll be out front with the Denver and the Inglewood guys. We're going to be moving to the front of the Century Theater. Cruiser 10 on services. Up services is patched. All right, just get CSI over here when they get a chance. Copy. Yankee 46, where do you need me? Go to the Dillard slot, that's where everybody's staging. Metro 10, I'm sending another victim with the other CSI. 
All right, so there, you know, you just got Chaos City. You heard James Holmes, and that was an hour and a half in. What do you mean we heard James Holmes? Which one was that? You, you heard them call out his name. Uh, yes. You know, we yes. had earlier. Um, I, I'm going to wait till after the after the commercial because I got another a full 13 minutes that we need to run. Oh, I see. Because we uh, didn't hear the thing about the bomb yet. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back with Nighthawk. Uh, please stay tuned. Thank you. Okay, this is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Nighthawk all about the Aurora shooting, and we're also listening to police tapes from the, the scene of the crime, et cetera, and, and the surrounding area, I guess. Nighthawk, where were we? We're, we're about to hear the second part of a tape. Yeah, actually, I, I want to jump away from the bomb threat here for a minute, and I'm okay. going to go... I'm going to go a couple of hours, three hours or more into this. I, you know, I'm still timelining this. There's just so much tape to go through, and, I, and I'm still trying to time mark this stuff, so I'm having to guesstimate a little bit. So excuse me with that, because I know everybody's going to go, oh, you're wrong. And, you know, it would one hour and 20 minutes is hour and 31 minutes, but whatever, you know how it goes. Here's a report well in. Um, they've discussed that a door is open, uh, I think it's in Macy's. And then somebody has somebody else at gunpoint uh, near the jewelers. So let me run this. Any unit that can start inside the mall, Hellsburg Diamonds, one at gunpoint. Yeah, I can't do it on uh, Blue Puppies. Well, thinking three, our team is moving to Hellsburg. Copy. Hellsburg is first level on the east side of the mall near the northeast main entrance. Northeast main entrance will be just five escalators. All right, so now we got an officer that has somebody at gunpoint. And, you know, and I'm still not sure because I've listened to this several times and I'm not sure if somebody has an officer at gunpoint. Uh, well, let, let me just, what I heard was that the the person, there, it was a woman who, uh, maybe I don't have this right, but I got the impression they were sending somebody to handle someone had a woman at a jewelry store uh, or jeweler at gunpoint. Okay. Well, yeah, the, see, that's that could be exactly what it's here, and I'd have to run it back here and do it yeah. again. But now no, we got—I I don't know. But yeah, but see, when now we got now we got red backpack guy, we got black pack back guy, we got the guy in the flan, the guy in the in the plaid shirt, early in running. Uh, we got James Holmes locked in his car, drugged out of his gourd, not able. In far as I'm concerned, anything I've seen about him, he was incapable. You know, I don't know if anybody shot a, a, a tactical 12 gauge, but you don't do that with one handed uh, knocked out of your Gordon head anything. And um, we've got uh, uh, three guys dragging another guy into a vehicle. We've got a guy holding somebody at gunpoint. So now we're we're up to six people now. Okay, uh, just with that, right? Um, there, I've seen some pictures that they had taken of a gas mask. Somebody said. CNN photoshopped, and I kind of fell victim to it, but I had to go back and look when somebody pointed it out. It's actually two pictures, but some evidence was removed from the crime scene, which was, was a knife. Now, I'd have to waste a whole bunch of your time to go find it, but there's a, a report from the officer who said that he had somebody that had been eviscerated. Now, being eviscerated is a task wow. that, uh, yeah, that is not a, you know, being eviscerated is not something, you know, a college student uh, does. It's, um, uh, yeah, you know, that's tack off special forces. Somebody's well. It's also uh, my. I mean, it's also not James Holmes again. You know, yeah, because right. this guy was all dressed up and. Uh, now, was he wearing a gas mask when he was shooting people? Well, according to the eyewitness, the, whoever walked in, I, I don't even know how they're going to take this to court because nobody's going to be able to prove anything to anybody because nobody's seen James Holmes. They've seen a guy completely garbed out and in, in, in gear. Right, so you couldn't recognize him. Is that right? Right, right. And the first. Well, what about the idea of the red hair? Would the red hair have stood out at all? 
You'd think, but it just depends on what he had over his head. Uh-huh. Um, and I, and I, okay, we got Ghost Walker in here. All right, Ghost, how you doing? Ah, uh, good. I, I I didn't realize you had me lined up. I went I went and grabbed my kid from uh, football okay. practice. I'm sorry yeah. about that. No problem. You're special forces. You're on AFR, Carrie Cassidy's show. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, hi, there. I, hi there. Yeah, I didn't want to. Uh, sorry, sorry, Carrie. Uh, no, ghost. that's okay. We we have a bunch of callers also calling in right now. So so go right ahead uh, w- with whatever you can present, uh, Ghost Walker. All right, Ghost. Uh, I'll introduce him real quick. He is ex special forces, uh, very uh, military trained. I've met the guy personally. He has been to my home. Uh, he I I, I watched his uh, body language. He uh, reminds me of people I've spent a lot of time with in my life and some of the things that I've done. And he's going to describe what his opinion of this as far as the team movement and and, uh, uh, Ghost, hopefully, don't say the word. (laughs) I I, I shall refrain. Um, Here's the the thing. First of all, you got down to the smoke bombs. These are not your average, you know, out of the jar. You can find these in any um, military surplus. These are obviously semi-high-end, if not really high-end, because you could hear the cops choking in the background. So this is probably more towards a um, a strong tear gas, not to mention the pops and the sounds. I would say uh, the way they were talking was like uh, maybe six to eight of these things inside these bags. Um, the other thing that kind of I, I had slowly caught was um, the evisceration. This is not a commonly used word. This is what still throws me off. You very rarely will hear a cop say that. They would refer to it as a, you know, a a bad knife when this guy's been cut open, like he's been sliced open, or they give it a name or a number. This guy didn't give it a name or a number. He specifically used the word evisceration. And that's like that's like field stripping a, a, a that's like field gutting a, a deer. To give you a better idea, I mean, it's one hundred percent fatal. There is no there is no return from that. Okay, uh, is is but is that uh, something? If cops use that term, is that a military term? Could that be a cop that was military? Um, could have been, yep. Yeah. Okay, just curious. But usually, they, usually they, they don't usually word things like that. Usually, you'll hear them use numbers a lot. Yeah, of I, I, I agree. We, yeah, everyone knows that. You know, it's on all the cop shows. <laughs> Every, everything is code. The other thing they were talking about was they were talking about two entries or, or, or two um, entries behind the screen. Now, if you also remember, if you were listening to some of the videos, you, you heard about um, a handful of these people were shot clean between the eyes. I mean, sniper style. Right, and know. and is the idea here that this this couldn't have been uh, the 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 sniper that was dressed in black, wearing I don't know if he has a, a gas mask, but he's he is it he's shooting people with a, a rifle. No is way. Is he the one who who shot no, people no behind way. the eyes? No way. Okay. No way. I see. Uh, 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 that was an AR-15, right, Ghost? Yes. Yeah, uh, AR-15. When the bullet hits, it doesn't. It doesn't go through and through. It's a, it's a tumbling bullet. When it goes in, it stays in, and it's mix, it's a mix master bullet. It goes in and it bounces around and does all kinds of damage. It'll turn uh, you jello brand gelatin. Okay, right. so it's not. But you're saying it's not a clean between the eyes hit. Yeah, well, so what if you just walk in and start shooting straight up? Anyway, I want to go ahead, Ghost. You know more about this. Yeah. This this is not this is not easy even even in a stand up even in a stand up position for someone in a semi dark room you got tear gas going these guys I'm thinking about the two holes the two areas by the screen and I'm thinking that these people were here way ahead of time um, the best way the best way to get somebody because night vision doesn't necessarily work in the fog however thermal thermal vision does and they do have thermal scopes. So you're saying it was a ret- reported uh, that they had thermoscopes? No, you're not going to hear that. You're not going to hear that reported. There's, I see. You're not going to hear that. But that's based on my understanding with the with the smoke and the tear gas. These smoke bombs. This this was basically. It's almost impossible. It, it, it would be almost impossible to see. You'd have smoke pouring out of there. The only way you could actually get a really clean shot on somebody is if you used a thermal. Anything else that comes to mind here? <clears throat> oh. What was it? Well, going? you know, as you said, as you said, Ghost, you heard the tapes with me all the way through, which we just it would take five hours of commercial free to even get through all of it. But you know, there was a report of to check the bays behind the screens because they're huge. 
And, uh, of course, it, it would be so easy to get behind that screen, be unseen. Uh, you know, we had the witness okay. recording. Le- so- let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this, especially you, uh, a, a ghost walker. Um, can you tell me if, you know, and I know this is going to sound a little weird, but but this is, you know, I'm Camelot, and so this is the kind of way we think. But um, does any of the, you listen to a lot of police tapes, and you listen to people that are in and out of the, the scene and so on and so forth. Is it possible that some of those police were planted? Is it possible that some of those tapes, some of the things recorded? Okay, we're going to have to. On the other side of the hour, we'll come right back. I'll answer that on the other side, Kerry. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll come right back. Hold on, you guys that are calling in. We'll get back to you. Okay, this is Kerry Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Nighthawk, and we've been joined by Ghost Walker, uh, Special Forces trained, uh, I guess, ex-military guy, if, if I understand correctly. And, and if I'm wrong, correct me here. <laughs> Ghost Walker, are you still there? I'm still here. Um, okay. I think I think the last the, the last question you asked was: Is it possible that some of these these police officers were planted? It, it's 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 probable, and but at the same time, it's kind of hard to hide a, a, a cop within a bunch of other cops where they all pretty much know each other. But it's not it's not impossible. But I mean, this whole this whole thing just smells of a of a of a well almost a well set. Um, operation. Okay, uh, we, I was talking to someone behind the scenes just a, a bit ago, and we were talking about the notion that uh, it actually sounds like the shooters, uh, multiple shooters, uh, multiple people all dressed up in, in, in various ways, uh, that this was an op, a training op, in which, uh, you know, that they were programmed to think that there was a training op and that the people they were shooting at were dummies. I, I'm just throwing that out. In other words, they were so mind controlled that they actually seem to be performing it as if it were were an op, you know, a training op. Are you asking me this question? Well, I'm I'm sort of throwing that out as as do you think that this is I mean this sounds seems like the cuz otherwise how do you get a group of guys to go in, you know, and shoot a bunch of people in a theater? You you got you got they've got to be programmed. There's no other well, way I mean, to get there's always there's always that possibility and of course our our CIA, you know, when I was in the military I dealt with a lot of spooks, and they're not—they're not our kind of people. <laughs> it's the only way to describe it. I, yeah, you know, the only other time I have ever seen eyes like the only people that have eyes like a CIA, especially a long term, are uh, hookers and uh, uh, pole dancers that have been doing it for thirty years. They're just dead eyes. There's nothing there. They they have been programmed, relocated. Now anybody that's seen the James Holmes James Holmes uh, uh, video of the arraignment, if you look at the guy, you will see, and you can count it. Assuming the video stays up in different places, you can see it. You can count it. He will look down, and his eyes kind of close, and then he looks up. And you can count to about 25 seconds. And then his eyes open really wide twice, five seconds. And then they stop. Then he looks straight forward, 10 seconds. Then he looks a little bit to the right, five seconds. And then his head drops back to his chin and he fades out, 20 seconds. And then it starts all over again. You can count it, literally, uh, whenever they've. Yeah, that's, the camera a, that's incredible. Guys, I have a couple people calling in. A few people dropped off. I guess they got tired of holding here. Uh, no, do you go. mind if we take some calls here? Uh, no, you go. Ha- anybody yeah, have go. anything to say before I take a call? Go for it. Because, you know, I got people trolling my videos. And, and I, I want to say right here, I, I'm, as a, I'm as fallible as anyone else. I'm not. Somebody said, I'm saying these things as if they're gospel. I'm not saying anything as gospel. I'm saying what I'm thinking as I'm learning. And it's all right. a bit learning. No, I mean process, you have so. to piece this together, and and that's that's the job that you've got, um, that we've all got. And you take the evidence, and and you see what you can make out of it, and and that's you know you don't hold tight to any particular line of thought. You you keep keep moving with with the new right. new things that come in. Uh, so we got a caller from area code six four six. You're on the air with Nighthawk, Ghost Walker, and myself. Hey, Carrie, Nighthawk Ghost Walker. This is Amanda Mays from y'all's chat rooms. 
How you doing? Well, hey, Amanda. How you doing? <laughs> Good. I was trolling your biz that you posted, and I was listening to the links you had posted the other night, and I have to agree that listening through some of that footage, it just feels wrong. Like there's something that bites at my stomach. Some of the language that the police use, Ghost Walker, you alluded to some of that just didn't sit right with me. And uh, so I really appreciate you, Nighthawker, putting it up there for us to just review and to go through and to just listen to. And then the other thing that I wanted to say was that I was able to get into your chat room, but not the normal way, Carrie. I was able to get into it via your event stream, oh, not the man. chat button. So I just wanted to call in and say if anyone wants to get to the chat, they just go to events and then scroll down to live stream, click on that, and you can use your chat. <laughs> okay, that's that's cool. I thank you for that. That's very sweet yeah. of you. All right. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. Y'all have a good show. <laughs> okay. Right, cool. Thanks very much. <laughs> All right. Nice. Uh, okay. We, we got another caller here, so we'll just go with them. Uh, area code, let's see. Uh, 973, you're on the air with Nighthawk, Ghostwalker, and Carrie Cassidy. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I'm from New Jersey, and uh, there's a couple of false flag events. I believe that this was a false flag event, mainly for gun, gun control. But there's another even more important one that's coming up. You've got the anniversary of September 11th. That building uh, sir, down, sir do, I mean, does this relate to the shooting itself, or? Well, it yeah. does. It's tied. I mean, it's, yes, does, it does. How does this relate to the Colorado shooting that you're calling because me about? Because the Colorado shooting was a false flag event. I saw the movie The Manchurian Candidate, and the, the you look on the face of Holmes was exactly like in that person in the movie, and that he was basically in a trance. He was into mind control. Is what yes. I uh, he, yeah, he was he was well over medicated on. I, I'm thinking some kind of a hallucinogen. Um, you know, when we we can make a connection to 9/11 several times. I've had, I've had a lot of really weird emails come from some really weird stuff that just make me delete them instantly. But uh, yeah, there 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 is some adjustment to the, uh, there's some things to the uh, um, Jewish calendar here. You know, the shooting happened just after Ramadan. Um, uh, the person who, uh, the corporation who owns this theater, um, if, if you go through, you know, the corporate channels, you also find it's also connected to Frank Lowry, Lowry, who also owns the mall across from the Olympics, and also, well, I mean, had just wait, signed I the mean, 99. Let me just say that James Holmes's father was working on a software this uh, that was able to trace the uh, people behind the LIBOR scandal. And that in and of itself is reason for his son to be targeted and turned into uh, a Manchurian candidate. This is a warning across the bow, no doubt about it, to, to his father. Um, and apparently he's still working on this. The LIBOR scandal, uh, the, the idea that they may want to destroy some financial records uh, and, and linking that up with the Olympics. Yes, well, no. uh, no. Not not only that, Carrie, but do realize that that you know not twelve hours before this, they managed to kill two birds with one stone. They shoved Shel Sheriff Air Perro, or how do you say his name, name to the back of the headlines when he came out with all the information about Obama. Uh, less than I, I think it was fourteen hours after all that information came to light, it disappeared. Okay, uh, into, that's into interesting. Okay, caller, I'm going to have to let you go if you don't mind here. Uh, thank you. Okay, so at, at this point, uh, you know, we were sort of talking about the connections that were that are all part of this. So what you're saying is 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 right before this, uh, Sheriff Arapaho, I believe is how you say his name. I could have that completely wrong, but that's I, what I think. Sheriff Aparo, I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. Okay. But, you know, uh, he didn't come out with all of that information just, just previous to this. Well, that's meaningful because uh, I, I actually have some inside knowledge of some more information about to come out about Obama. That, right. uh, that is extremely uh, sort of um, implicating, I guess you might say. And, and so even if this, that was their effort, uh, it's, it, it's very short, short-lived. 
you know. Yeah, because- but do, notice, do notice that all of us truthers out there, I, I, you know, I hate that label, but, you know, I guess that's where we, we live. But uh, we all forgot about that for, you know, for the last two and a half weeks. Okay. All right. Take- it, it's valid. It's valid. But I think we got more here going on. Um, you know, Ghost Walker, do you have anything else that you haven't sort of added to the mix here that you wanted to talk about before I go to the next caller in terms of, uh, you know, some of the incidents that were, you know, sort of happening here in terms of the timeline, any thoughts of, of, of anything else? Well, I mean, there is one little thing I can throw throw in there, but I mean, don't hold me to it. But um, you do remember that we did bring a lot of um, Russian special forces into Colorado for specialty training, um, more or less based on il- infiltration of terrorist compounds and, and uh, civil unrest detainments. Okay, that's so- valid. You know, uh, I, I heard there was sighting of Russian troops at this theater. Um, I don't know if that was a rumor that was going around or not. This is where I'm getting to. This may not even ha- this may have been orchestrated by our people using their people who wouldn't care one way or another if they took out an American. Well, yeah, you know, Ghost. Uh, let, let's do something real quick, okay? You have the experience. I have the experience. You're a little younger than me, and things were different, a little different than when when I was younger in the military, but. Uh, Still, if I was going to do an operation, it would be 8 to 12 men. Okay, first thing I would do is, uh, if I was going to pull an operation like this, okay, and this is theory. This is conspiracy theory 101 here. This is not gospel, I'm, and, and I'm making this up, okay? I'm, I'm just going to say this is how I would handle it. Okay, so I would want to create some kind of terrorist activity that would number that would do one of two things bury a headline get rid of the un uh, or, or deal with the the gun control et cetera et cetera et cetera <clears throat> so i got eight to twelve guys i i put four guys in uh civil civilian clothing i put them in the theater i've got one guy and they i i have one guy upstairs in the balcony area or the upstairs area I have a guy, a sharpshooter, behind the screen. I have a, con- a, a setup in the front corner, and I've got two guys outside. Okay, so I have set up. Now, I've got this situation to do. There's a call to go. The call to go brings the guy out of the corner. He opens the front door. Front door opens. He walks out, goes to the front door. The, the, the person who... We've all heard of the reported guy comes in, shoots into the air, throws a gas canister. Guy in the back of the theater throws a gas canister, completely fogs out the entire situation. Guy behind the screen begins shooting. There is a a, a ricochet or a mess of fire, and one of my guys gets hit accidentally because we are in gas. After all, let's think about this. So now... I, 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 me with my uh, camouflage shirt and the guy with the red backpack and the guy with the black backpack and the guy that was behind the screen, whoever the hell he was, all take off towards Alameda. One of us has gotten hit, and hit by friendly fire. Okay, we're headed towards Alameda. Uh, we have a getaway van or a, an extraction team behind that. That extraction team is sitting there waiting on us, and then some uh, witness sees that they're they're pulling one person, possibly wounded, behind them. Calls in a report of three men bringing uh, dragging another man along into a vehicle. Now we've got our fifth guy who has uh, botched the job, gotten lost in the attack. He has ended up in the he has broken into the mall to hide. Uh, police finds the person in the mall. And he is holding somebody at uh, gunpoint. Now comes in the CIA op. They uh, report a uh, a bomb or a secondary device in an SUV in front of the theater. We have cleared the front of the theater. Now we need to extract the rest of our, not only the real witnesses, but the uh, pretend witnesses. Because I've seen a couple of pretend videos 
or witness videos that I go, mm, that sounds not right. So we have walked all the way through this, and we have multiple issues that I just cannot associate with anything that I'm hearing from the mass media. My problem is not what I'm hearing. My problem is the mass media, the media that tells everybody what the hell's going on. It has absolutely nothing to do with the reality of any of this. Yeah. And Ghost Walker, you have been involved in all this, Special Forces. You know, I was in a different kind of black op. Okay, uh, Nighthawk, we're, uh-huh. we're going to go to a short com- break here. Okay. We'll be right back and continue right. this. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we are talking to Nighthawk and Ghost Walker about the Aurora shooting, taking calls from uh, people out there. And if you have some information you want to disclose it on radio, this is the time to do so. Uh, so we got a rundown just before the break with Nighthawk kind of giving a blow-by-blow from his military training on how he would set up the op and the individuals. Uh, now we just, uh, it was Nighthawk's idea to have Ghost Walker do the same thing. He's, he comes from a different side of the military and, and just to compare, uh, I guess, uh, sort of methods, right? Methodology. Talking to me? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were just explaining something that was... A- no, I was just saying um, that, that we'd like you to then explain from your point of view, how you would set this operation up from the get-go. Um, that's, you know, that's really a hard thing to do because doing something like that just it would not be my, my normal thing. But, I mean, there's, there has to be one sniper. I would, I would almost be willing to say he's got a thermal. He's on the back, he's on the back screen area. Um, you'd have to have the sporadic shooter dressed up as Holmes in the front door. You got your three guys. You'd have to have three other guys, possibly in the theater up front, also shooting back because the odds of the guy at the door hitting as many people as he should, as technically as he should. Hit, what, what's throwing me off here is you got to have you got to have to have a doorman, the guy that throws the gas cans. You got another guy in the rear that's going to throw gas cans, and you got one outside that's staging up Mr. Holmes there. Um, what's throwing me off is the knifing um right. why why was there a knifing involved who was this victim credible yeah and why was it done the way it was done i mean obviously it, it something still doesn't smell right about this right that's, that that is a very interesting that's a very interesting point somebody was targeted and they besides homes and that's the only thing i got to think of but that was that was my that was my basic breakdown. I I would need to really, I would really like to know who some of these people were that got the bullet between the eyes. I'd really right. like this guy you know, also go, also goes. So we discussed that you know when you look at the overhead crime scene photos, there's you know you, there's two things that stand out very clearly to you, which is an AK-47 laying on the ground and a pair of uh, approximately uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know women's shoe sizes, but if I put them on my feet, they'd be about a size six or seven pink flip flops. And I don't wear, I've never worn pink flip flops. So, you know, it had to be a female, in, in my opinion. And uh, so we, we, we have these pink flip flops. And, and then there's also a report, which I just, I'm sorry, I don't have time to dig it out, of a female uh, a hostage. That never went to the news as well. You know, my whole point here is, is regardless of what happened, regardless of what we're hearing in the news, regardless to see who, who, who we see on the stand, okay, the whole rabbit hole here is, number one, what the hell really happened? Why is it being covered up? You know, so... You know, and, and it's what's going on. You know, I'm not infallible. I'm just... I, I'm chasing rabbits like everybody else. And, uh, and okay, by... Uh- but, yeah. But so <laughs> let, okay, I appreciate that, but we we have this ev- evisceration that happens in the midst of all this craziness, oh. and 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 I'm not sure in terms of timing when when the person was found by the cop and and reported, you know, but in other words, you've got a, a theater full of people, and then they're they've got to be running and screaming during this, right? And climbing over over chairs to get away. I mean, tell me this is happening, right? Because nobody said that, but I'm assuming 
if somebody came in a theater and started throwing, first of all, the gas canisters and hadn't even started shooting, then already they would be scrambling out of their seats, right? You would think they were. You would think that. I mean, okay. that would that would only be common sense. You see something open up. You see you see those bags come in, and all of a sudden you start hearing popping. I'm not sitting. I'm not ducking. I'm going for the door. Right. But at the same time, I mean, I'm going to try to get as much information with 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 you know a photo shot with my eyes and try to picture everybody that I can I can possibly see with my eyes. Okay, but there's mean, meanwhile, I don't know anything about evisceration. Like, uh, can you tell me how long does it take to do that to a person if you're a professional? Oh, if you got a good knife, you can you can pull that off in, in seconds. Okay. If you got a, nice, but, you got a good sharp knife, you can pull that off in seconds. But, but you got to have a person, you got to have a person who's in the crowd somewhere. I mean, we we haven't gotten a description of where the person's body was found. In other words, front of the theater, back of the theater, side of the theater, or in the seats. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you had to have, because people, we've been naming shooters and this and that, but in you actually that's another person. It's required to be able to go and get involved in the crowd to such a way you get close up enough to somebody to do that kind of thing. Well, here's what I here's what I see. Um, you also see a blood trail going in through the back door. I think, and this is a strong possibility, some unlucky person happened upon the staging that was taking place. This person in order to keep everything quiet, was literally sliced. From, I know, but what? Okay, crushed, yeah, from explain. Explain. Crushed explain it. And dragged inside the theater. Okay, yeah, wait, wait a minute. Wait. Let, let, let me break in for a second. Uh, very quickly, to give the complete and gruesome details of an evisceration, uh, it, it, an evisceration, a military style, or at least the way I was trained, is you go behind somebody, you shove your fist around their neck, you go bring your forearm up under their chin, you take a knife, you come around from the front side, you come in just right of the gallbladder, or just left of the gallbladder, you go in and you pull up all the way across the liver to the lung, and it, and it, it separates all those muscles so they release and your guts drop. That's what happens in an evisceration. Okay, I don't you don't do gross. that. I know, but you don't do that when somebody stumbles on a group of people right. planning an off. Because that's that's a that's a vendetta killing, wouldn't yes. you say? It, that that is that is to make sure that that person never talks again. Somebody came around the corner. Now the crime scene photos, and I've seen several people say they were going in, but I have looked at those blood spray patterns. It could have been either, either way. So you know, I don't. I don't know. I can't give you an answer on that as far as what the hell happened back there. And I, I don't know. The only people that can are the people that were back there at the time. Well, but, I but I do have two bad, you know, but we definitely have two gas masks. We definitely have something going on back there. We definitely have a missing vehicle from the crime scene. We have a missing knife from the crime scene. So... You know what? What can you say after that? I mean, what do you deal with? What, what do you talk about? Go ahead. Well, you had to make the knife disappear because it didn't. It, it didn't fit the whole scenario, and that's that's what I was getting to. Because I, I also noticed that the blood was a lot heavier at the door. It started off lighter, further away from the door, which could have been which could have been the initial which could have been an initial throat. Cut, but I I don't. They didn't give the full details on that. Getting them up there by the door, they finish it off to make sure the person does not does not come come around from this and right. realize that. You know, I mean, I mean, ghosts. If uh, uh, do I have permission to be completely uh, kind of gross? And I need it from Danny too because I'm going to get gross here and I'm going to need ghost help. Okay. Uh, well, you have, <laughs> you have my permission as far as we're trying to figure out what you know what's going on and and what's the psychology. Because there's a psychology behind doing something like that as opposed to shooting somebody as a sniper behind the eyes. That's getting in into hand-to-hand -hand kind of combat type of situation, right? Exactly. So, ghost. I mean, we've both been in situations in the Middle East where um, we have to dispatch an issue or a victim or a witness. You know how our government works. You know exactly what I'm talking about. 
there has to be people that don't see things. And when you don't want somebody to see things, you need to make it look as violent and random as possible, correct? Correct. So when you do these kinds of things and you have to make these kinds of things, we have a report. And you can go to our tapes again and listen. Okay, we have two people at the back door. That uh, One was eviscerated and another one was a child who was shot in the chest and in the face. And I'm really concerned about this child because this child, you know, to me, I mean, I, I have a daughter. And, and this child has never been mentioned in a news report. This child, I, I have reports of the parents that were both taken to the hospital. Um, but the kid was never found. So who is this kid? So but, we, but there we, was a, a report in the police tapes of a child. Oh, there was? Okay, well, may, I missed that. Yeah, uh, well, they're saying they have a victim. One of the police in, in the thing is saying to the person, he has a child victim, something like <clears> that. that. Okay, so, you know, and then we get, you know, we run through all of this, this madness. And, but to go back to just being a cold hearted, person doing uh, following orders everything about this just smells to high heaven to me of somebody or a group or a team of some sort and i'm you know uh, ghost kept saying you know navy seal last night we kept getting knocked offline but i don't think it's seal i think this is cia personally that's my opinion i i there, there's something behind all of this crap um, you know, I can go this, I can go that. I, you know, I, I can say this is all gospel, but it's not. This is my opinion, and that's all there is to it. You know, uh, Ghost, what is your opinion? Okay, uh, I guess we've got a commercial here. This is a music that I don't recognize, so I don't know what's going on here. Hello? Is, is this a, a bleed through Nighthawk? I got no bleed through from this side. Nothing from me. Okay. I got nothing open. I closed everything down for your show, so. Okay, that was really bizarre. Uh, hello? Are we still on the air? I guess we are. Okay, I don't know. Maybe that was... <laughs> That was I, like, you know, I'm curious. We got more callers, Carrie, because yeah, we do, I, yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, well, uh, let's take some callers because I, you know, okay. I got a couple of people that were trolling me that actually had good information. So okay, fine. So area code two one four, you're on the air with Nighthawk, uh, Ghostwalker, and Carrie Cassidy. Yes, Carrie, uh, I want to um, uh, say something about this whole incident uh, concerning about the shooting that took place in Aurora, Colorado. And uh, the night that this all took place, and uh, two weeks prior to the shooting, we had the fires that were going on in the hills. And my only conclusion is this. There was enough of this going on that we call distraction. And this distraction is simply is to do something to make the people think that we're concentrating on one area while we do another. And what I want to say about this whole thing is this. The shooting that took place was definitely a black op operation. And I also want to say that uh, this could lead uh, to the uh, quickening of the announcement of UFO disclosure. And I think that's what the whole thing is all about. It is to keep the people distracted and for anybody to make this announcement about UFO disclosure. I totally think that this is what this whole premise is all about. Okay, caller. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, do you have a military background? Let me ask you that. Uh, Carrie, I do not. Okay. But uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, there are some things that uh, I do know and that I do understand that uh, this is not a uh, walk in the park, you would say. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, caller. Okay.
Okay, so uh, we're going to go on to another caller at this point. I uh, appreciate that call. Uh, caller, we, ha we have a call here uh, from someone in area code 414. You're on the air with uh, Carrie Cassidy, Nighthawk, and Ghost Walker. Um, okay. Um, I just, I, I guess I just kind of disagree um, with the last person is that like the focus is off of Colorado and I also uh, almost just uh, well I called in earlier and I kind of got discouraged because I didn't know what you're talking about but I did want to talk to you to kind of keep your focus you know kind of on a little more important issues I mean this is important I, I agree uh, but I actually in my discouragement I hung up on my phone call and I actually called Stu Webb. I mean, I hate to kind of beat the dead horse here. I've already uh, called in and talked to American Freedom Radio and you about Stu Webb. But when I called him, uh, he actually said that uh, uh, beyond just the CIA or, or a black op, this might actually be a satanic holiday. Um, uh, well, definitely a sacrificial uh, situation, uh, but there... There are, I'm sure that the other things are going to come to light. We're just using this opportunity to analyze a situation that did happen uh, very course. recently is, uh, and is important uh, in the context of things. Uh, hey, we're hey, putting me, pieces. What? These are pieces. This is Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio, and we're talking to Nighthawk and Ghostwalker about the Aurora shooting. We have a few statements to make here. First of all, uh, go ahead, Nighthawk. You want to make a statement? Well, I mean, the state, the general statement is here, uh, on my opinion, is unlike many truthers, I, I'm not going to lock my heels on in on any of this. Anyone that presents me with more information, which I would love to have, you can send it to me at Nighthawk, N-I-T-E-H-A-W-K at freedomslips.com. I'm not here to play troll games or any of that issue. If you have something better, better information... If you have reviewed all of these tapes and find them better information, can present it to me so I can spread it out there. You know, I am not the investigator. I am the journalist, and the journalist needs contacts. The journalist needs information. So, you know, send that stuff to me so that I can sort all of this out, um, you know, because... Okay, I, I appreciate that. Now, I, I want to say right off the bat here, though, that, that people have to pay attention to these incidents and what the major media is doing is saying this is a lone gunman. And what our job is to tell the truth behind the matrix and expose the lies right. of, of what they're putting in the, ma the major media. And this is how we do it. We investigate and, that, and we, we look at the clues and we follow the, the trail until we, we find basically pay dirt. dirt. And um, that we're attempting to do that here. This is just a, a, a rather um, remedial uh, exercise because none of us are, you know, forensic uh, criminal experts, uh, as far as I know, anyway. <laughs> and uh, but at the same time, we we do have, uh, you know, these people have military backgrounds. They see uh, some military action going on here. That's that's good good information. That's that's good. That helps you assess. The information coming in. This incident is important just as the Colorado fires are important, just as uh, what's going to go on and does go on at the Olympics and and some of the parallels. The fact that James' father is cre was creating a software that can, can investigate uh, in a sort of a forensic way people who are involved in the LIBOR scandal You've got to understand they're taking down the financial system. If, if this software had that capability, it's completely plausible that his son would be targeted. This goes in deeper than we're being allowed to see at this time. And I can tell you that these are going to connect dots between here and the Olympics and between other incidents that will probably you know, come out in the future. And so this is how we follow a trail. And it's very, right. very important. You know, my biggest fear, Carrie, is the fact that at this point that uh, they're going to need to bury this. They botch the job. And usually the way to bury any event is with a new event that huh. uh, is sure. way worse. Um, and, and I didn't mean, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make this about me. 
in any way. I just wanted to say that I'm not infallible, so, you know. That's okay, but the tapes, you know, the police tapes speak for themselves. I mean, we've got multiple right. shooters, we've got multiple people here involved in this operation, uh, and, and, and certainly having uh, Ghost Walker here as well to testify on the military side is, is valuable. Um, so it, it looks like we got the... Uh, do, is there something else you want to talk about? Because we've got um, 10 minutes left in the show. It's been great having you guys here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to hear I, more callers. Okay. At this moment, we've more? only got one more caller. Uh, this, right. I believe, is the same guy that just called in a while ago is now calling right. back. Okay. Um, so I, I can I can let him on for for a moment here. Area code four one yeah. four. You're on the on the air again. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just make it real quick. Um, like I said, I, I gave him a quick ring. Um, he said that there might be a little more to it. There's a woman named uh, Kathy Rubio, um, and she runs, I guess, a show named Nation in Distress. And uh, apparently she has some information saying that um, the location of the shooting was actually like at, at a tri triangular shape where they found the car. It was like uh, it was at the, the, the capstone of everything. And uh, I just think that Kathy Rubio and the Nation in Distress uh, you know, it might be a good tid point. Like I said, I called in earlier, hoping to talk some, about some, some other things. Um, obviously, you went on this night, but like I said, you know, I got that info. So, hey, you know, I just rang right back in just to kind of throw All that right. to you, Kathy Rubio, Nation of Stress. So, okay. thanks, Gary. All right. Thank you very much. Right, yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, caller. Okay. Yeah. So, at this moment, we also were talking about the idea that... Uh, that there is some symbolism in the name Aurora, uh, as as what you were saying is the goddess of the golden dawn. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. You know that that's interesting. Yeah, you know I I went at this around the time that we were experiencing the uh, solar eclipse and all of that. But uh, oddly enough, you know it's just it's just trivia. But uh, Aurora is the the goddess of the golden dawn. You know, does it have significance? I don't know. So Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I mean, no, it, these things are not random, uh, as we've seen time and time again. There's a great deal of symbolism that goes on. Uh, I've been, I can tell you about the Olympics. I've been sent countless uh, amazing sort of symbolic uh, sort of renditions of, of the blow-by-blow -blow in terms of the layout of the Olympic situation uh where the stadium is etc cetera, etc cetera, um and and all of that so there are all people right, that yeah. are very hot on that trail uh and i imagine every time you find an operation you're going to find symbolism going on right you know and uh, all your listeners out there um I, I would love to get the take on uh the year 1609 and the year 1610 since those were the two theaters that were both reported um, you know, Century 16, Theater 9, Century 16, Theater 10. Uh, the numerology events or the year events that occurred then would be interesting. The only thing I found is the fact that uh, in uh, 1609, Galileo presented the telescope. But I bet, I bet, I bet if we dig enough, we'll find some kind of... Okay, what you're saying is, is it, is it the theater number 16? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so, but 16... No, no, century, century 16 theaters, and right. the theater number was 09. So okay, but see, you know, no, you, you, you're putting them together, but actually you should... I mean, I've studied the occult, because the 16 is a, a very important numerology-wise. Uh, it has to do with what's called the tower card in the tarot, and, and that is a burning uh, sort right, of... Right, uh, right, right tower and it also has to do with uh you know destruction and and mayhem uh and purging there's also a, a, a purging sort of thing going on there and then the nine is always used in the occult a heavy duty uh very important number so so there you know i mean these things do go on but nonetheless uh the dark night i mean we're not talking about that we haven't had we actually barely have the time to even graze this subject but Doing this at a dark night, uh, you know, opening uh, in Colorado, this the whole dark night thing is is a whole nother part of this 
the aspects of this, and you can draw parallels in within the movie and with within uh, apparently what James supposedly did. In other words, there there direct there was a I guess a, a one of the incidents of the of the Batman movies in which they had a shooter in a similar way, correct? People know yes. about that. Well, yeah, I think there was somebody else's, but I think they were copycat. Well, Just. right, but what I'm saying is, is when you get a, a scenario in which it's already been in a movie or before. Oh yeah, and- yeah the neural yeah, the, the program pre-programming of the the mentality. Uh, exactly. Ghost, uh, Ghost, I know you got opinions here uh, on on this operations. On this operation, are you there? Hello, who? Ghost, unmute. I, I hate it when I do that because I'm sitting there talking to myself and I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, you're, you're talking about opinions still based on this particular theater incident. I mean, am I correct? Well, yeah, I mean, that's I, what the show is about. Yeah, it's short on well, time. I've been, because I've been, I'm sitting here, I'm trying to draw out some type of a diagram. I, I guess the only thing I can tell you is, um, um, Carrie, you've got a huge audience that follows you. And a lot of these people get into this stuff. I, I, I really urge people to get out there and listen to these videos because I think there's things that we're not catching. But I mean, the biggest thing you need to understand is, this was not a one-man operation. Anybody can see that. I mean, if you got gas canisters going off in the back of the theater and you got gas canisters going off in the front of the theater, you've got gas all inside this place. You got you got people getting shot clean between the eyes. This had to have been a sniper, somebody with a gun inside. That more than I would I would more than willing to bet was using a thermal and not a night vision. Um, it's just it it. It, it, it reeks, it definitely reeks uh, of a well-orchestrated... Yeah, I, I, you know, Ghost, I got to wonder at this point if, uh, and it's probably too late now, how many three-inch by three-inch uh, squares were cut, one on each side, or maybe a theater screen. Uh, what, what, was every, anybody able to check the screen? Oh uh, God! We don't know. Were they okay? We we are uh, wrapping up the show. Uh, the 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 ending of show music is here. Uh, I want to thank both of you guys for coming in and and for being so concerned and and Nighthawk for doing your in depth uh, analysis and and for staying the the course for with sure. this with this information. Uh, good. I, good. We will be back on Friday on Nighthawks uh, Revolution Radio and at the same time. And I'll have a different guest at that time. Actually, I don't even know who's going to be on my show at that point. But uh, I do want to say that uh, this is this is really great information. Uh, any th- last parting words? Um, real quick, real quick. Furniture. <laughs> Okay, they're Aren't furnishing you, the wrap. The whole they set up the furniture. That's all I can say. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you I'm very good. much. Good night. In 2010, millions of people were awakened to the question of what. Now the next question that remains to be answered is, why in the world are they spraying? An investigative look into one of the many agendas associated with chemtrail geoengineering programs, weather control. Why in the world are they spraying? Premiering and streaming live August 18th at the three-day event, Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails Conference and Fundraiser in Los Angeles. For more info, go to www.cbclive2012.com. Why in the world are they spraying? Order your copy today at www.whyintheworldarethespraying.com. Watch the premiere live August 18th at the three-day event, Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails Conference and Fundraiser in Los Angeles. For more info, go to www.cbclive2012.com. Why in the world are they spraying? And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple.